welcome to a humble Highland home. Thank you so much for joining me here today. As part of my autumn and winter garden preparations, I mulch the growing spaces, which adds a layer of mixed organic matter on top of the beds to keep all the plant roots from freezing. It can add nutrients and prevents weeds growing. Adding a layer of mulch can also mimic nature as the leaves fall from the trees onto the ground, protecting the ground and eventually turning the leaves back into soil. All the pathways in the kitchen garden, I've got a layer of wood chip on them and the pathway in front of the greenhouse and the composting area is pretty high traffic so I've been making the most of this footfall to break down the wood chip over the past few years. I can tell by the weeds that are now starting to grow in the top layer of what was wood chip is suitably broken down ready to be lifted and used in the garden. Given this is going to be used in different areas of the garden, I am going to take out the bigger of the weeds so I don't unintentionally spread weeds across the garden. Especially those perennial weeds that come back year after year just to say hello. This is a good example of how using fabric membrane doesn't always stop weeds from growing. They may prevent them from growing underneath but the weeds can also take root on top of the membrane. I've got some areas that are covered with membrane and I've got some areas that are covered with cardboard. Both work well, but the cardboard does eventually break down along with the wood chip. I decided to use the membrane in areas that I knew that I wouldn't be planting anything directly into the ground. And along all the pathways next to the growing spaces, I've used cardboard. And this is to encourage the worms to come up to eat away at the cardboard and to help the wood chip break down from underneath and our footfall will help the wood chip break down from on top. Also, I'm happy to use fresh wood chip in the areas that are covered with membrane, but next to the growing spaces on the pathways, I only use old wood chip and that prevents any nitrogen loss in the process of the wood chip being broken down. Anything that is decomposing will take some of the nitrogen out of the ground. So this is why I don't want anything that's taking any nitrogen away from the plants that are growing. And this would include the wood chip. And Kebby and Baloo are in on the action, wanting to know what I'm paying so much attention to. Given there's always time for tea, this is a perfectly timed delivery of a cuppa and time for a wee break. But this will confuse Kebby and Baloo because they won't know who to go with. Will they go back down to the garage with Adam or will they stay in the kitchen garden with me? Let's see. Well, the garage and Adam obviously won, but I think it's just because Adam's got a cosy blanket for them in the garage. It's been incredibly misty here over the past wee while, so not much of a view over the hills, but my kitchen garden's good enough. I 
I will only do this process every couple of years, depending on how well the wood chip has broken down and once the weeds start forming in the top layer. I won't need all this broken down wood chip just now, so I'm going to bag it up in some recycled compost bags and store it until I need it. And because I know that I won't be getting any more for another couple of years, then I need to spread it out over this time and use it sparingly. I use different mulch mixes in the garden, depending on the plants that I'm mulching around. But for the broken down wood chip will be added to a mulch mix for the perennial garden, where I have the rhubarb growing, where I will add a nice big layer of some well rotted manure. As a great big thank you for everything that they produced for us this year and hope for next year too. I'm also going to use some of this broken down wood chip to top up some potted plants and also to cover over some growing spaces that are not currently in use and then I will cover this over to protect the soil and to allow it to settle over winter in preparation for the spring growing season. The gardener's calendar is a very short calendar. As soon as we're into one season, we're planning for the next. Now it's time for the next layer of wood chip to be laid on top of the fresh cardboard for me to repeat the process. So in a couple of years, I will lift all of this and continue the process year after year and the garden spaces will have this yummy natural resource returned to it, which then provides goodness back into the soil as nature demonstrates to use throughout the seasons. Although the colder months can be quite dark and grey, as everything dies back and hibernates, I'm planning a little bit of spring colour by means of a few dwarf daffodils and mixed tulips to celebrate the spring awakening. Both tulips and daffodils are best planted in the cool ground as they need 13 to 15 weeks of cold weather to help establish their root system before the shoot emerges. Once the sun starts to warm the ground, it sends a message to the bulb that it's time to bloom. So I'm planting a few here in the pots just outside the greenhouse so it will be a welcome sight as I start to plant my seeds in the springtime. I'm going to share some across the different areas of the gardens across the croft too. It'll be a welcome sight. I might just put a wee spring in our step and give us some motivation for the exciting possibilities of the year ahead. Until next time, thank you so much for spending time here with me today. Take care of yourself and others and I'll see you in the next video.